Good afternoon, you two people. Today, I am honoured to be joined by Silas Hawkins, who is a prolific actor and has had many, many successes throughout his long and illustrious career. And he's going to read for you um, a short story by one of my favourite authors in the world, Mrs. Enid Blyton, or Miss Enid Blyton, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, here we go. The Funny Old Dragon One wintry morning, James had the biggest surprise of his life. He was going across the field path on a misty day when he heard something snorting in the field over the hedge. I wonder what it is, he said, and he peeped to see. And good gracious me, in the next field was a dragon. Yes, a dragon, just like you see in a storybook, with a long spiky tail and four clawed feet. James was so astonished that he stared and stared and stared. The dragon saw him and nodded to him. Good day, he said in a mournful voice. I'm looking for work. Can you tell me of any? Well, said James, still more surprised to hear the dragon's strange husky voice. I'm afraid I, I don't know of any work a dragon can do. How did you come here? I didn't know there were any dragons at all nowadays. Well, there shouldn't be, really, said the dragon. But somehow I grew, though I know I'm dreadfully out of date and useless. Nobody wants a dragon nowadays, not even to fight with. So I left the place where I lived and came out to look for work. I'm very unhappy, really. James squeezed through the hedge. He was sorry for the dragon, who had very large, soft brown eyes. He took a good look at him. Well, uh, I should think you'd better keep yourself hidden, he said. It's not likely anyone would be frightened of you nowadays, but you might be caught and put in the zoo in a great big cage like the lions and tigers and bears. And you might not like that. Oh, no, I shouldn't, said the dragon in alarm. Couldn't you take me home with you and let me be your pet? I have a very sweet, loving nature, really. No, I don't think my mother would like a dragon on the rug in front of the fire, said James. In fact, I'm sure she wouldn't. And Daddy would say you smelt. Smelt? said the dragon, offended. Do I smell? What do I smell of? <laughs> you, you smell of smoke, said James, sniffing. Oh, that's because I can breathe out fire and smoke, just like the old dragons could in the fairy tales, said the dragon. Watch! James watched. The dragon breathed out a lot of smoke from his nose and mouth, and a long red flame spurted out too. The dragon looked proudly at James. What do you think of that? he said. A good trick, isn't it? My goodness, said James. You'd be useful to Daddy when he lights bonfires, a puff of your flame and smoke, and any bonfire would go well. Oh, I wish I could do that. Listen, boy, said the dragon excitedly. Couldn't I help with people's bonfires? I could hide in the chimney in the daytime somewhere, and, and then my breath coming out at the top would look like chimney smoke. But at night I could creep out and go all round, puffing at people's bonfires and making them burn well. Oh, I should love that. That would be a real good piece of work for me to do. Well, if I let you do that, will you teach me how to breathe out fire and smoke just like you do? asked James longingly. Of course, 
said the dragon. So they shook hands solemnly, and James managed to take the dragon to his house by the side door, get him into the study, and stuff him up the chimney without anyone seeing. The dragon was long, but not fat, so he was quite all right in the chimney. His breath shot out at the top, and no one thought it was anything else but ordinary chimney smoke. That night, James gave him a tug, and he slid neatly down and slipped out into the garden. He went to the bonfire that James's daddy had tried to light. There had been a shower of rain, and the bonfire was almost out. went the dragon busily blowing out smoke. Went the dragon busily sm went the dragon busily blowing out smoke and flames. The bonfire flared up at once, and the rubbish began to burn merrily. The dragon laughed, <laughs> and so did James. <laughs> this was fun. Where's the next bonfire? asked the dragon. Oh, I don't feel useless and out of date anymore, James. I am enjoying myself. Well, the old dragon got everybody's bonfire burning very well indeed, and James knew that all the gardeners and daddies would be simply delighted the next day, and he would be the only one that knew the secret. James felt rather grand. Teach me how to breathe fire and smoke, please, dragon, he said. You promised you would. So the dragon gave him his first lesson. My goodness, it was most exciting, I can tell you. James was able to breathe out just a little bit of blue smoke at the end of his first lesson. Hoo-hoo-hoo, <laughs> said James. Won't I make the boys stare at school? My word, no one will dare be rude to me or punch me when I can breathe out fire and smoke. I shall have fun. The dragon went back to his chimney after that, and James crept into bed. Every night they went out together, and soon they were very fond of one another indeed. The dragon was the kindest-hearted creature, very fond of a joke, and James did wish he could build him a large kennel and have him for a pet. But somehow he felt sure people wouldn't like it. I'm very happy now, the dragon told James. I have good work to do, and I have a friend. That is all I want. Be sure to let me know, dear James, whenever any of your friends wants their bonfires kept burning in the night. And you may be sure I will go and do what I can for them. So if your daddy can't get his bonfire to burn well, send me a card for James, and I'm sure he'll arrange things for you. And if you meet a boy who can breathe fire and smoke out of his mouth and nose, you'll know who he is. It will be James, the only boy in the kingdom who keeps a dragon up the chimney. Thank you very much, Silas. Um, if, our, if my YouTube listeners wanted to contact you um, to, to do voiceovers for them or anything like that, um, who is your agent that they would go, go through? Uh, it's if they go to Kerry... Um, to, um, yeah, Kerry at Cut Clark... I can't even say it. Cut Glass Productions, one word, dot com. Mm 